Welcome, you're watching NDTV Profit. I'm Tamanna Anamdar and a story that we want to focus on is the push for renewable energy in India. One of the leaders and the leader actually, Tata Power, had a, a very, I would say, murky day today from a stock market perspective. They've crossed a market cap of 1 lakh crore rupees. It is the country's largest vertically integrated power company which owns and operates over 14 gigawatts of power capacity. The MD and CEO of Tata Power, Praveer Sinha, joins us now to speak about this journey and what's next. Uh, Dr. Sinha, thank you so much for speaking with us here on NDTV Profit. We're so glad to have this conversation with you in our first week and uh, you know understand what the company sees as panning out in terms of renewable energy so thank you first of all for being here and uh, let's start with a comment on uh, crossing this milestone of a one lakh crore rupee market cap thank you uh, tamanna for having me on your show always a pleasure uh, yeah i think it's a milestone for tata power tata power is a 108 year old company and uh, reaching this milestone is a uh, huge uh, uh, endorsement of what Tata Power has stood for last 100 years. And I think uh, the whole um, uh, credit of this has to be given to the founders who set up Tata Power way back in 1915, uh, setting up hydro power plants. So clean uh, power was that time also uh, very much a requirement and so it is today. So uh, such an uh, honor and a pleasure to be here and talking to you about how uh, Tata Power is getting ready as Tata Power 2.0 to meet the future aspirations of the country in terms of how do we provide uh, clean and green energy. And uh, I, I think uh, you will see many new uh, initiatives and projects that will be implemented of power in the coming years. So let's let's talk a bit about uh, them, uh, Dr. Sinha, and uh, especially in light of the recently concluded COP28 in Dubai, uh, where there were some very ambitious uh, targets also set. If you can just give us some color, some details of how Tata Power, as uh, the largest integrated power company, plans to fuel India's growth, but with cleaner energy. So uh, it's not uh, now, but actually about five years back, uh, Tata Power took a stand that we will move uh, from conventional coal-based plants to clean energy solutions. And uh, in 2015, we had 16% of our installed capacity, which was in clean energy. Today, we are 38%. And uh, we have plans to reach a 70% a level by 2030 and of course 100% by 2045. So what we have done is that in the last few years we have added capacities. Uh, it started with plain vanilla solar plants and then uh, wind plants. And then now we are moving uh, towards a, a hybrid of solar and wind. Uh, in some cases we've also uh, gone for storage. Uh, and in the next phase, we are setting up uh, pumped hydro plants uh, in our existing hydro stations, where we will be generating nearly three gigawatt of pumped hydro plants. The objective is that uh, we will uh, give them as bundled solutions to the consumers. And these can be utilities, these can be commercial and industrial consumers, where we offer them a, a bundled solution of solar, wind, uh, maybe a little bit of battery storage, pumped hydro plants, as also a bit of uh, demand side management and demand response. And the whole objective is to give 24-7 clean energy solutions. You know, I'm just going to ask you a follow-up there and I want to come to financials, EBITDA, your capex of 60,000 crores, etc. But just because of what we saw uh, in the last couple of years in the European context, where they realized when push comes to shove, renewable energy is cleaner, greener, preferable, but is not always consistent. And you talked about providing 24 by 7 renewable clean energy. Are you seeing operational issues and challenges there? What would they be? I agree with you that uh, compared to some of the other countries, we need to plan this transition. This cannot be a knee jerk react. Hmm. And that's why when we are talking about uh, the 24 seven renewable solution, we are talking of time frame of 27, 28 by when we would be in a position to 
uh, set up some of the hydropower plants and in uh, and at scale. Uh, these cannot be just one or two of them, but at scale, so that uh, these can meet the requirement of power uh, when we don't have uh, uh, the solar generation or the wind generation. So I think uh, we need to have a combination of solutions uh, to ensure that the power supply is not only reliable, but uh, there is resilience. That means there is a there is a fallback option and some of these solutions that we are implementing will support us in both ensuring reliable power as well as in ensuring that there is resilience and a fallback option. It, it also needs to be affordable and uh, uh, the energy costs need to be paid. Both I'm pointing out as endemic concerns of the energy sector in India. Do those concerns change or go away with renewable energy that your end consumer actually pays for it and it is affordable enough? I agree with you. Uh, power is a public utility and it needs to be given to everyone, uh, whether it is in urban areas or rural areas or to any type of consumer. And I think affordability and uh, cost of power will be a very, very important criteria. So when we talk of clean and green energy and in abundance, it also means that it has to be affordable and economical and it cannot be higher than what is the present cost. And I think uh, we are fortunate that uh, clean energy, especially solar and wind, uh, the costs have come down drastically in last few years and with better technologies it is expected to come down in future. Uh, if we can get the storage solutions at an affordable price and this some of the work that is happening in the battery storage and of course the pump storage, we should be in a position to uh, give uh, alternate reliable green power, uh, clean power at a tariff which is much lower than the conventional tariffs that people are paying today. Dr. Sina, may I ask you more specific questions? Because uh, we had this conversation earlier today also. We were speaking uh, with uh, JSW Energy and we were trying to get a sense of per unit. What is cheaper right now? Renewable or thermal power to make it and by the time it reaches the end consumer. Can you give us a sense of that? So, uh, I would not uh, like to give a present tariff, but I would definitely like to give uh, the type of solutions that are now coming up. And uh, the tariff that we are looking in 27-28 will possibly be lower than what is the present cost of power from conventional sources. So, so I think uh, we need to look at it uh, from a little longer term perspective and also the energy transition solutions that are coming in. So uh, if we implement some of the solutions that we have been working on, uh, I'm confident that post 27, 28, uh, we'll have power rates. Uh, and mind you, these power rates will virtually remain flat for 25 years. Oh. Because the solar and wind, uh, you don't have any variable cost. There is no cost of uh, uh, sun rays or, or the wind speeds. Uh. So, uh, so I think it's going to be a very, very attractive solution. So by that 27, 28 kind of target, uh, uh, because your uh, renewable energy uh, generation target is 15 gigawatts, 27 and 20 gigawatts by 2030. So by that 27, 28 uh, uh, target, uh, what is the EBITDA looking like? What is the free cash flow looking like when this switch happens? What are the concurrent financials looking like? So uh, uh, the reason why I'm saying 27, 28 is because uh, many of our pumped hydro solutions which we are working on will happen by that, by that time frame. And uh, the bundling of power that will take place with solar, wind, and the pumped hydro and some of the storage, uh, the overall uh, basket in uh, of cost will be much lower. And that's why I'm giving a target of 27, 28. And, uh, and what we are working on will ensure that we not only have good cash flows, but uh, we will have generate enough EBITDA to, uh, to promote uh, future capital uh, investments that the company will have to do. So any kind of number estimate that you can put together with it, with that uh, EBITDA outlook? Uh, I, I think uh, we have already shared that uh, in 
by 27-28, we'll double our revenue, double our EBITDA, and double our uh, profit. So those numbers are very much there, and we've uh, already shared. Uh, and uh, and I think we are very confident of meeting those numbers. Uh, give us a sense, uh, Dr. Sina, what is the contribution of the rooftop solar and group captive right now to the company's revenue? Uh, it's not very large, but uh, I, I think it's about... I would say about 10%, uh, but going forward, uh, this will increase substantially as these are new businesses and uh, we should be in a position to uh, do much better going forward. All right. Uh, you know, we've spoken and heard uh, a, a wonderful, uh, clear idea from you on the longer term picture, the move to renewables, just but some shorter term sort of um, uh, challenges perhaps ahead, copper prices, one of them, a key input, is looking like they will urge up. Last couple of months, prices have gone up internationally about 6%. Uh, does that bother you at all? Uh, what is the traction till, you know, you're still producing thermal energy on coal prices, the directionality there? Are those challenges at all? What we have seen is there is a cycle. Uh, it's cyclical in terms of the prices of mm -hmm. various commodities, uh, which includes coal. And uh, while it had gone up very much uh, during uh, 2022, it came down in last uh, six to eight months. Uh, and so it's cyclical. It's uh, We need to see what uh, uh, the sort of cycle it would be. Uh, of course, there have been few aberrations which have been there, uh, especially in 22 that we saw. But uh, going forward, I think it will be all range bound as it has been uh, before COVID. So we do expect that there would be some amount of increase, but not uh, uh, that it will uh, very much impact the tariffs or very much impact the project costs. All right. Uh, just a last word from you, Dr. Sana, uh, before I let you go, uh, is, you know, India has a very ambitious renewable energy goal. And the world is looking at India because it's also growing at such a fast speed. We often, uh, on global forums, start getting questioned about uh, whether we're going to be able to grow with cleaner energy. What is your view here on whether we can achieve these goals? I think if you see the track record of the country, we have grown uh, uh, at a very, very fast pace in the last 20 years. And just to give you some data point, uh, we were about 105 gigawatt in 2003. In 2013, we were about 200 gigawatt, and now we are 425 gigawatt in 2023. So every 10 years, uh, we have actually doubled. So if we say that by 2033, we will be 900 gigawatt or 1000 gigawatt, I don't think we'll be very much off the mark. Uh, and uh, the, the new capacities, which are uh, de definitely going to be uh, renewable capacities, uh, will get added. So the 400 or 500 gigawatt capacity additions that we are talking in next 10 years is definitely achievable. And we have demonstrated it uh, with our actions in last two decades. All right. We've made a good start. We have to follow through. That's the important thing. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure speaking with you today, Dr. Sinha. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.